Okay, so good morning, guys. So welcome back. We are going to continue with our Git session. So today is Git Day 10 session. And today the date is 23rd of September. And uh, the timing is morning 9.17 a.m. IST. So thank you guys for joining this call. So from last two days, I couldn't take up the class on the weekends. So because of some reasons, and uh, we will continue our Git session. So as I said earlier, right before we start the session, or uh, before we start this recording, so we will be taking another uh, no four to five sessions max. I suspect in another five more sessions, I'm going to complete the Git. Okay, let's see. Uh, till this uh, Thursday, by max by Thursday, we will try to finish all the Git sessions. And from the coming Friday, we will start freshly with the Jenkins. Okay. So regarding the interview question answers with for when it when it comes to the Git, actually, I will not be taking any session. I will see if in case if I feel to take a session, I'll take a session where I will discuss all important interview question answers. Or else, what I can do that I will create a document and the document I will share with you all that you can go through the document and you can go through all the interview question answers. So I mean, just take the same thing that out of from 10 companies, if you get a call from 10 companies, max only two companies will ask for the any kind of a questions on Git. Right. See, you have to understand one thing is whenever the interview starts with the CACD, suppose assume that uh, uh, you know any interviewer will ask you, okay, we are looking more for the person who is very good in Jenkins or GitLab or who has worked more on CACD part, right? Because their requirement might be uh, you to write more and more on pipeline side, right? So many companies are there, right? Of course, like you will have some dedicated people who will be writing a pipeline on every day, right? So based on the project requirement, right, they will be doing a lot of changes. They'll be you know, fixing a lot of issues. Uh, the existing uh, you know, pipeline itself, they want to enhance it, right? Or else what happened you, uh, while running, it might throw another, or else some other new requirement come where your your lead might tell you to you know, add few of the new uh, you know, plugins and all so that you'll get some features and uh, you have to do some changes according to that appropriately in the pipeline. So it's a day-to-day -day activity work. Every day, like uh, when you go to the office or when you log in, right? If you are into CICD pipeline or you're writing completely into pipeline, you will be involved in writing a lot of uh, you know, pipeline and also a lot of new onboarding application. Any new application comes, right? Even there also you'll be start writing a lot of pipelines because you already have some standard template. What you have to do that? You have to take the template. You have to modify it according to your requirement. That's what pipeline is all about. But still, as a basic, you need to learn from the scratch, how the pipeline is being written and how to manage and maintain it. So whenever any interviewer will start asking a questions for the pipeline, then you can suspect that you will get a question on Git actually. If the people are not asking, if the interviewer is not asking you question uh, straight away from the pipeline uh, when it starts right, then you can understand, okay, he will not ask any question on Git. So that's what I said that out of 10, rarely one or two company uh, interview might, where they might ask you questions on Git actually. So it doesn't mean that you shouldn't prepare in the, uh, for the kit. You should prepare. As I said, that, that's the basics. You need to know that. And the second important thing about the Git is actually every organization, 90% of the organizations are using Git. Okay, few companies are using Bitbucket, few companies are using Azure uh, repos, few companies are using AWS commits. Like that, few companies are using different, different tools. But you will see that 90% of the companies are using Git. So when you get into the company, definitely you will come across with all Git repos and you need to work on Git and you need to know all commands, all uh, concepts you should know. So you cannot discount that, okay, since it is in interview, it has not been asked, I need not to update on Git. No, not like that. You have to update on it. Git is mandatory. Any questions so far, guys? Anything you want to add in with this? Uh, why Facebook is not using Git? They are using some other tool. Yeah, they might be using some older Mercurial tool or something like that, right? Uh, because they would have shifted to maybe what happened, right? Uh, whatever the Facebook needs, right? That they might have not got from the Git. They would have even reached out to the uh, Git community also. They would have not got any kind of help because now Git is actually managed by Microsoft, right? So since it wasn't, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, it is uh, the Git or the GitHub actually what is happening that it has been acquired by the Microsoft. See, Git is an open source. Git is an open source, no doubt. Still, still Linux servers and estimates, they do it actually. But whereas the Git, GitHub product is acquired by Microsoft. Now, whatever the features which they need or they want to do some kind of enhancement, they're not able to get it. That's what they even, they would have even reached out to, uh, you know, to even to the GitHub uh, community or the contributor also. 
obviously they would have not got then they thought okay let us move to some other yeah even i heard that git has been uh, no like my facebook they have started using some other tool i think if i'm not wrong they went to some other mercurial tool or some older tool uh, that is only reason there is no other reason whatever they want to manage it they might have seen some flaw in git and they would have told okay we can't now manage our whole project in git no we'll move to some other tool actually maybe they i think still i think uh, facebook if i'm not wrong they might be using some open source tool only for managing it not like they went to some proprietary tool or something like that right okay any other that's good now guys what happened now in the last session in our uh, git day nine session i think i took it on friday right so we had covered some major topics like git rebase was one which we had uh, took it right if we saw many examples right different uh, cases of examples where we where we use a git rebase and uh, we also use a git cherry pick these are some two important uh, topic which we had covered in our previous session and git rebase uh, you saw right it was so important that git rebase you can change the history it means that whenever using git rebase it is obvious that you will change the history means you will try to change even the commit id also so in in many cases what happened right when you are applying the git rebase git rebase will tend to change the commit id and when you apply to the git rebase you should be very very careful while doing it right so that also had told you that right whenever you are doing a git rebase don't do it on top of your main branch or your master branch it might corrupt your whole branch or it might uh, you might see some unsung uh, unconsequences uh, issues you might see because it will trend to do a lot of changes to all the commit ids then in that case reverting back or you know recovering back from that state is little difficult so whenever you are doing a rebase so you should be you should carefully do that and it's a very important operation whatever now we are doing it whatever the upcoming topics which we will be taking it today that's all depend upon the rebase itself the rebase concept itself so let us see now what exactly we will be learning today so guys what we are be learning today we will be learning some very important things apart from this git rebase and git cherry pick there is something known as a i can just say rewriting history this is very important uh, why it is important you'll get to know in some time like uh, say for example like you have did some commits actually right you have did some commit commit means i did see, uh, i called the git commit hyphen m command and you committed into your local repo suppose you say that rajesh i want to you know change the already existing commit right say for example i have committed a file in that file i have having some two lines i don't want that two line or i want only one line so is there a way where i can do some rewrite so that actually i can do the changes in the already existing commit so sometime you might ask a question say rajesh if you have already committed let us don't think let me let us commit one more uh, new commit will do in the in that case when you are committing it let us remove a line you said i don't want uh, the existing line or you said that one line is not required i will try to create one more uh, you know like one more uh, job where i will try to do the changes push into staging and finally do a commit so that will be a new commit where it will uh, you know it will do the changes whatever is required that is also correct to you but here what happened that you are when you're doing that you're actually doing one more commit so managing lot of commit is also headache right so tomorrow if you're going to the company where you'll see hundreds of commits has been done by various different developers or thousands of commits have been done and if you do a, a git log hyphen fn one line command you would see that there are so many commits are thousands of commits are there you'll get headache actually you will not know you will say that sir who did all these commits what it did why it was not uh, no cleared up cleared up do you have to really need so much commits suppose assume that you are working on a project four months five months old back you no know, old uh, five months or six months back commits are there do you think that in the project we need such a old commits and all no it's not really required sometime you need to even do clean up also so how do you clean up so that clean up activity what we call as squash what do you call we call it as squash squash means you need to remove many of the unnecessary older uh, like commits so to remove unnecessary older commits we call we use the term as a squash so we'll be seeing today also so that's all that's all part of your rewriting history so what do you mean by rewriting history means actually basically right like changing the already existing commits so i said right whenever you want to do a commit when you do a commit later you want to Uh, revert back some changes or do some changes to an existing committed. Then you can uh, we, with, with the help of a uh, with the help of a, some of the cut certain commands you can rewrite the history. And if you do a rewrite of the history, as the name says, rewrite the history means you are doing some changes to an existing commit. 
whenever you do any changes to existing commit, always obviously the commit IDs will get changed. And we know from our previous session that whenever there is any kind of a changes in a history or in a commit it is happen, who does that? The rebase does it. So rebase is the only command in Git where it does the history change. No other, apart from Git rebase, uh, rebase command, no other command will do the history changes. Only the re, uh, rebase is the only thing which will does the history changes. History change means it is a commit ID change. Right, guys? So now we say that, Rajesh, when you are trying to do a rewrite history, does it mean that we are using rebase? Yes, we are using rebase. Rebase is used across many kind of requirements. Right? So rebase is also one of the very important option or the command which we use with the Git action. Right? So now for doing this, what we'll do, guys, let me do one thing. Let me go back to my folder where I've been minting all these repos. So, right? And I will do one thing. I will try to uh, create one more folder here. So what I'll do that, I'll just uh, create one folder. Let me write a folder name by something like a rework. Okay, because I want to do some rework, right? Right. So I create a new folder. I'll come here and I'll try to open a terminal. Right. So I'm under the uh, no, rework. Now what I will do that, I'm just initialize it. I'll run a git in it. Right. So you initialize it. So whenever you know that now that whenever you create a new folder, always you have to run the git init command. It is going to create make this directory as a repo. How it makes it by adding this dot git folder, right? So now what I will do that I will do some small simple changes, guys. Let me do the let me create some file. So I'll just say uh, something new item is a command PowerShell command. I'll just say new item one dot txt. I'll create a file with the name one dot txt. So create a file. So now what I will do that, I'll just say git commit hyphen m added a new file, something. Before that, you have to just do a git add dot and then do a git commit hyphen m added new file. But you see that actually that when I'm committing it, I'm making some mistake in a commit. So I have to give the proper spring, but purposely I'm giving a wrong, uh, uh, wrong spring. It should be a d d e d, but I just did, I just did a d e d new file. Now it means that you have committed a chain, right? So this commit has been done now. Now you will say that okay. Now you will say that Rajesh, when I do a git uh, log hyphen f n one line, and if you enter, you would make out that okay, you have did some changes into your. It means that you have did some mistakes while committing. It means that you, for the commit message, you have did the changes. Now the stuff, what you'll say that, Rajesh, now I want to uh, make sure that what are the commit I've did, right? That message has to be proper. It should be something like added one.txt file. Instead of new file, I should even change this spelling also, as well as I need to give the proper file name also, one.txt. Something like that I have to do. So how to do it actually? So what is our topic is that, but we need to understand, right? How exactly, uh, you know, like uh, changing the latest commit message. So this is also one of the requirement, right? Many times you will see that you will be, uh, you will be uh, doing a lot of mistakes while committing, right? Because in the commit message itself, you might put some, uh, you know, like wrong spelling mistakes and all you do, right? You do some typo error, right? So there, what happened? Always a git. Uh, now we have to always even correct that also. That is also one of the requirement, right? So what we'll do that we commit messages uh, has a typo error, right? Do you agree with me? Typo mistake or typo error? We need to do that. So we need to change the commit message, right? So for that, what we're going to do that, guys, there is something what you can do that you can go to the Google and you can just type something known as a git uh, re, uh, rewriting history. Uh, I can at 80 at last, yeah, something like that you can give. So you will get a at last in web page. So this is what a very good put, uh, website, guys. As I said, right? As I said earlier, that always whenever you want to learn any Git concept, you have to always follow the Atlassian uh, pages. There he has given a very important. See, for example, here you have did a commit here, right? 
and then like what has happened you have did a commit here now you understood okay i have did some commit changes actually so you need to uh, brand a new commit it is not you need to change the commit uh, message itself then you have to amend the history you have to amend this this is what the amend so we use a git commit hyphen fn amend message this is hyphen fn amend option you have to use to do the changes in the last commit id in this case guys when i do a git log one one line you could say this is the last commit id and whenever you want to do any changes to the last commit id whatever you did right there is very simple option to do that so first let me copy this and, uh, you can go here and you can just say the first here to this link so this is the link guys you have to go it okay for understanding how the re uh, registry works rewriting history works actually so what i will do that i will go here and i will just uh, try to what i will do that i will just uh, try to first let me run the git log to make sure that you will get this you will see that this is a message actually now what i will do that i am going to do a changes now right what are the changes i have to do that whenever i want to do it i have to just say git uh, commit <clears throat> hyphen fn amend now you could see that guys, this is a commit ID, 4EAE. When you do a git commit ID, you could see that even this commit ID will also get changed now. Right? Right? Hyphen uh, FNM. And then I also use this hyphen M option. So just say added, what is it? Added uh, one dot PHT. Now you do a git lock. Can you see here, guys? You did the things also. Right? Earlier it was ADED. That spelling itself was wrong. And then like this was something new file I, I did change here now you could see that as part of the amend it did the changes to last commit id message as well as you could see that the commit id itself has also got changed it means that the history has changed right so amend is basically used for always doing the changes to the last commit id message whatever the last commit you do right that message if itself is wrong or if it is something incorrect then you can correct with the help of a hyphen fn amend you say that Rajesh, I have did some four or five commits. I want to do some second commit or third commit message. I want to change it. You cannot use a hyphen fn amend at that time. Amend will only work for the only the last commit itself. So before last, there's one more commit. Is there I want to do changes? No, amend will not work. Amend will only work for the last committed message uh, itself. It will try to work on it. Am I clear on this, sir? Till here. Ashish, Tigdish. Did you understood? Till here. Yes, sir. It's easy, right? So hyphen fn amend, hyphen m, give the appropriate message, then it will try to do this commit message. Of course, right, in a day-to-day -day activity, when you're working on uh, when you're working on the real time, you will tend to do all these mistakes, right? So definitely I will need to know how to do the changes in the commit idea also, commit message also. Then in that case, we use amend actually. So guys, uh, like in, to be very honest with you all that this, uh, when it comes to rewriting history, this topic, right? Uh, rewriting history or changing all the existing commit ID or many other changes are there which you will be doing seeing in some time. These are not really asked in interviews, right? Uh, uh, I've never seen any interviews. With, uh, they are more asking on these things, but still as an end user, because we are a DevOps engineer and we work on the real time uh, in the DevOps and we will tend to work on the Git also, right? Definitely we should know all these commands and we should know everything because there you cannot go and ask anyone. As I said earlier also, you shouldn't go and ask any of your existing engineer or in your teammates. You shouldn't ask anyone about any kind of a commands or options with that because you should be uh, you should be aware of all such things, right? That's what I already told in the last session that. So you should stop asking your teammates and even though you are uh, new to the team or new to the company, right? Right? You are onboarded or you are newly joined to the company. Still, you shouldn't ask anyone. You should try out yourself itself. That's the reason. Always best you should update yourself and go, right? Because if you are start asking every question to each one of your team, each one of your team member, right, it will create a bad impression. Okay, good place. Okay, now, so we need to do the commit message. Yes, we did it down. Now the thing is that Rajesh should say that fine, this is okay. It was the last commit message I did the changes. Say for example that I want to do some changes to very older commit messages. Say, for example, I want to changing in changing the older commit messages. How do you do that? Right? Let's see now how to do that. Say, for example, I will add one more, uh, one more file. I'll say item 
new hyphen item something two dot txt file okay and uh, let me do a git add dot okay let me do a commit hyphen m uh, what is it uh, added two dot txt file okay let this be perfect there's no issue you are committed it when i do a git log hyphen hyphen online you did a second commit which is which is perfectly fine right the latest is add to dot let me do the let me add one more file uh new hyphen item sorry uh 3.txt file and i'll do a git add dot and do a git commit hyphen m added instead of add a t.txt file because it's a new file i mistakenly i did a 2.txt file it's a mistake actually i'm just doing a mistake okay so i should have did add a 3.txt i i mistakenly did a add 2.txt now let me do one thing let me create a remote file new item what is it actually 4.txt right 4.txt so now git add dot now git commit hyphen m what is it guys added four dot txt this is a proper message which you put now when you try to learn when you try to understand git log hyphen hyphen one line you could see that you did a poor commit now but you could see that the third commit whatever it did is wrong it should be added three dot txt but your head is actually pointing to the latest commit id but before the latest before the latest you are having in some older uh, commit you are having some wrong commit message actually. So my requirement is that I need to do these changes to instead of uh, added two dot txt two, I have to change to added three dot txt. Right, guys? Do you agree with this statement? Yes. Very good, sir. What you have to do that now, as per our documentation, we need to change the commit message of. In our case, guys, in our case, which is the commit ID which you need to do the changes? We need to do the commit. This is the commit ID for which you need to do the changes, right? So this is the commit ID. Two, what is it you have to give? Added 3.txt file. This is what you need to do. From 2.txt to 3.txt. Right? How we are going to do that? Now, in, in when, when it comes to this part where you need to change some older commit ID, there is one important, uh, like uh, something strange or peculiar command is there in uh, Git, which we call the head actually. Head and we use something as a tilde actually, tilde symbol. Tilde symbol means this symbol actually. Now, what it means was, for example, say for example, guys, like my head is pointing to here. Now, you see that Rajesh, somehow I want to take my head to here or to the previous commit. Then I have to use something known as a head tilde of one. It means that your head will be start pointing here. Now, if I want to go here, if I want to go to this commit, I have to say head tilde two, like this. Now, for example, here, you say that Rajesh, I want to do this change. So your head is pointing here. Head minus one, head tilde one, it will take the pointer to here. Head tilde two, it will take the pointer to here. Held tilde three, uh, it will not take to here actually. Uh, uh, because this is nothing but this is the this is the uh, a separate commit actually because it doesn't have parent actually so that's what i will tell you later why exactly we should do hill dot three assume that actually like i want to take to i want to do the changes to here you have to take to the held head tilde one actually because head is pointing here head tilde one will take here to the pointer head tilde two will take you the pointer to here so now to understand it if i do a kit cat of hyphen file you have seen this command right hyphen p suppose if i say head tilde of one right head tilde of one means your head will take to here actually it's a enter sorry it will take enter can you see here guys it is showing that for this pointer who is the parent for this pointer this one right dd7 right can you see these are parent see dd97 or it means that actually your head is pointing here because when a head is pointing here it will say that okay for this commit id when you do a cat hyphen p who is a parent, who is a tree, and who is the author, who is a commenter, all those, and add a 2.txt. It is actually showing this one, actually. Now, if you say that, Rajesh, I want to take to here. 
here. Now it will take here, but who is the parent for DD97A? It is 946 C, 9463. He's a parent actually. So it means that this is a tilde symbol with help of a head tilde symbol. It is basically taking you to whichever, whichever appropriate uh, your uh, whichever appropriate commit right where you want to move right you can use this peculiar head command with the tilde symbol you can so can we use this symbol to make sure that I want to move my head pointing to there and try to do it yes so that is the reason what happened right you need to use this tilde symbol along the header and to take the pointer to there there and then try to do the changes into this commit message whatever you want to do it. this is the one of the way of is it clear? Right? Is it clear? Now, when I do a git log, uh, anyway, we have that git log hyphen fm online. We have this output. We have this output. <laughs> now, the thing is that, guys, actually, now here a small trick is there. What the trick means? Say, for example, Rajesh, I want to do the changes to this commit message because that here it is having some mistake. So you will just say head tilde one, it will take here. But actually, if you take a head tilde one, if you take it to here, it will take here, but actually, it will take to here, but it will start doing the changes to the next commit, whatever it is there. Now, here, according to the diagram, if I take to the diagram, so totally in this case, we are having four commits, right? This is the first commit. This is the second commit, third commit, and fourth commit. And your head is actually pointing here. Right? Your head is actually pointing here. Correct, guys? So now, your latest commit idea, whatever you have, is this is a commit idea, your latest. And previous to this is this one. And previous to this is this one. I'm just taking. So these are the four commits I did and head is pointing here. You say that Rajesh, this is a commit where I have to do the change because here you are having some added, uh, what is it? Added 2.txt, but it should be 3.txt, right? So, but right now the commit message is this one. Now you can take the head to here. So with the help of this head detailed one, but what head tailwind will do that actually? It will take your pointer to here, but whatever the changes you, you have to do, no, it will start doing from the next commit ID. From here, it will start doing. It will not do from exactly from here. So in that case, what you have to do then? Then you have to say that, Rajesh, let me do this. Let, let me do a head tilde 2. Okay, if you take a head tilde 2, my head will start pointing here. It will start pointing here. Now, whatever the changes you want, you want to do, right? It will start doing from next commit. It will start doing from here. Not from here. So whenever you are trying to do whichever position which you want to do, right? You have to add one, one uh, plus one. You have to add it so that your head point, uh, your head will go here, and then the, what are the commit you're doing? It will start doing from the next commit outwards, right? That is one simple formula to use. It's not only that you have to take the head position to the same. You have to take one before that. You have to take it, and you have to start doing the changes. Am I clear on this, sir? Till here, sir. Am I clear, sir? Any doubts you have? Now, to do the changes, to do this commit changes, suppose I want to do this add.2.txt to add.txt. Say, assume that I'm using this only, head tilde one. You'll see that now. To do that, how you have to do it? So you have to use a git command. You have to use, or use a rebase command here. Hyphen I you have to use. Hyphen I means interactive. You want to open the rebase in interactive mode and then say head tilde one. Now, if you open it, can you see here, make out that you're having uh, commit ID A D A zero for the latest commit ID and B seven E four two eight for your previous commit ID. Right, that's the reason I have pasted over here the commit IDs. Now, if I try to do git rebase hyphen I head tilde one and say enter, can you see here? It is taking me to the latest commit ID A D A zero A B. But what about the previous which, which I want to take? It is not showing. That's the reason, guys. What happened? Right? Whenever you're trying to do a changes to the commit ID. You have to always use whatever the number is, the position is that, that you have to plus one you have to do. It means that here it is one, 
you have to do two actually. So that's the reason you have to do head to tail to two. So now what I will do that, I will go back here. I'll just say that Rajesh, I'll just quit it. I don't want to do that. So what I will do, I'll just do a git reverse hyphen instead of one, I will give two here. Now you could see that actually it will open this to, uh, it has shown here. Now you see that Rajesh, this is what, uh, as per the diagram, B7, E2, it. this is what I want to do the commit change. So this is what the message, instead of three, two dot txt, I should add as a three dot txt. Right. So now when you try to open it, when you try to run a git rebase command space head tilde two, it will open you and it will show you which are all the commits IDs are there. In this case, guys, what happened, right? Whenever you are trying to do a commit, actually, now you could see that actually coming over here. Now, when I try to run a git log, I can have one line. Now you'll say that Rajesh, I want to do this commit changes. I commit ID message added instead of added two dots txt, I have to change the added three dot txt. This commit ID will, will change it because I, obviously as part of the history change, it will do the changes, right? But for this header, he's a parent, right? Even this commit ID also will get changed. So whatever the next subsequent commit ID which are there, right? Say for example, this after this, there are some five commits are there. All those five commits ID will also will get changed because when this is getting changed, even those other five commits will also change. But here in this case, in our case, it is one day one year seven. This commit ID also will just change. Even this commit ID also will get changed as part of whenever you're trying to do a rebase or when you're trying to do a history of one commit, the next subsequent IDs will also get changed. So that's a simple funder, right? So it means that now Rajesh, when I'm trying to do this commit change message, uh, commit message when I'm trying to do, obviously this will get changed. I mean, even this will also get changed. Right. So now when I try to do a git rebase, head tilde to and the enter. As we you have to use hyphen A option, interactive, and enter. Now you could feel that actually that okay, Rajesh, this is what I change man. This is okay, this is fine, but this is what I want to do the changes. Okay. Now you could see that what are the commands you are having, guys? You are having commands something like P means pick, pick the commit, use a commit. P means it will take the same commit ID. It will not do any changes. Whatever the existing commit ID, ID is there, just change, just take it as it is. It means that, right? So why we need that, guys? We will see it later. Don't worry. So pick means you use the same commit. What are the commit is as it is. Don't do any changes. Okay. Now R is there. So you can either use a P or you can even use the full word or the pick. Now the next is R. Means reword, reword the commit ID. Use the commit ID, but edit the commit messages. Yeah, it means that Rajesh, whenever I want to do the commit changes here, because this is what the wrong commit message is there. Instead of add dot .txt, I have to mention add dot .txt. I have to use a hype R option. R, or else you can use a complete word, not the R, a reword. There is something like edit is also there. Edit is something like you want to edit the file. Say, for example, Rajesh, I have a file. I have already committed. It has some two lines. I want to, I don't want two lines. I want three, one line only. So it means that actually you have to use the edit option. If E option, you have to pass it up to do the changes into the file. Or else you want to rename a file, whatever you want to do. Squash means, as I said earlier, like you want to meld into previous. There are hundreds of commits are there. I want to squash. I want to remove all the commits. I have to I have to squeeze and I have to make it only with only one commit. I don't want to all older stay commits. I don't want at all. I want to remove all the older commits and I want to make it either one or two commits, existing commits. Then you have to use a squash. Right. Apart from this, you could see that there's something like a drop is there. It means that whenever you want to remove any commit, you can use a D. You can either use small D or you can you can use a complete drop like this. You can use a merge also to merge it, and you can even use a exec also. Exec is meant that run some uh, rest of the line using some shell script. So basically, most of the time, this exec is always used by the developer, not by us. Right. So what are the important options as uh, being a DevOps engineer? We'll use it. We'll use it means we'll use a pick. R, reword, edit, squash, drop. These are some four to five important commands we'll be using. So now you say that Rajesh, I want to reword this commit ID. No problem. Go here, go at the top, go to the insert mode, remove this pick, just, re just uh, rename as, uh, just make as a reword because this is the commit ID you want to change. For this, see, as per our diagram, if you go to MS Paint, this is what for this is what the commit ID I want to do change, right? B7 E, see B7 E248. So you have to just uh change it to reward. So after the insert mode, escape, you'll come out of the insert mode, just stay shift to colon WQ. 
Build the column is save and put from the file. Now you could see that it take you to the one more uh, file where it says that now if you want to do the changes, yeah, I want to do the changes. Instead of add dot three uh, two dot txt, I want to replace with the three x. See, add three dot txt file, and now I will save the file. Now you could see that guys, actually that <coughs> it has you have did the changes actually. Now if you do a git status, what it said that on the branch nothing to the commit. Okay, if you do a, a git log hyphen hyphen one line. Can you do the changes? Can you see here, guys? Earlier it was two dot txt, right? This one now it's so that it has changed this three dot txt, right? And you could see even the commit idea of this and this also has called change. Can you see here? Instead of b7e, now it has been changed to d2129, and instead of ad0, it has changed to 0b3c, right? Did you understood, guys? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Is it clear? I hope you are understanding and you... now. If you're understanding this carefully, now you understand, okay, Rajesh, I need to know all these things. In the real time, I should also know how, how to do all these changes. Uh, sir, if I changing one dot txt file in the same format, what you have done? So the all the commit ID is added one dot txt commit ID, two dot txt commit ID. All will change. All will change, correct. Okay, got it, sir. All will change, obviously, right? Because all these are chain link. Because here in this case, what happened, right? Okay, for this commit ID, who's a parent? This is a parent. For this, who's a parent? This one. For this, who's a parent? This. So when you're trying to do the base itself, you're trying to do a change something, right? When this commit ID will get changed, obviously all these three commits are also will get changed. The commit ID will get changed. Right? All will get changed. Right? Uh, what about the contents in the file, sir, in that case? Content, we are not doing any change, sir. We are only changing the commit message as of now. Suppose you say that, Rajesh, I want to do content. You, want, you, can, you can, we can even do that also. Whenever you're doing any change, guys, always the commit, whatever the exist commit ID is there, that will get, that will be, that will be rewritten or it will be a new commit ID will get generated. And what are the next subsequent commits which are already there and even that also will get changed. In this case, I'm just doing the changes from add.2s2 to add.3s3, right? This is what the commit message I'm doing. Whatever changes you do, right? Always there is a change in history. It means that there is a change in a commit ID. Once this commit ID is getting changed, obviously the next subsequent will also get changed. In this case, even this will also get changed. But whereas this two, uh, it will not get changed because you are not doing any change, right? Only this and this will get changed. So, so here in this case, if you see, watch carefully. In this case, the first two commits, no, the this commit IDs are same. They are not being changed. Only from here it has got changed. Right here, you could see a DD97 DDA. Yeah, it's same. 9463766B. Yeah, it's same. Okay, these two IDs have not been changed. Only from this third and fourth, these two have been changed. Right. So here in this case, when you when using the interactive rebase. Interactive rebase means I use the rebase, git rebase hyphen i, right? Interactive we say. Then always you have to use a head tilde. Whatever the position is there, you have to just add one more position. That's all. Right? This is a simple funda. You need to know it actually whenever you are applying this head actually. Right. So in our case, what we did, right? In our case, we use the reword, right? So in this, we need to uh, reword, right? We need to use reword since we need to change the commit ID or commit message. Sorry, not commit ID, commit message. Fine, guys. Good. Very good. Okay, let me do a thing. Let me do some more changes. Let us see some other. We'll let us see. We'll let us do some more play around with this. Actually, let me do a thing. Let me go over here. I have four commits. Actually, let me open the. Let me open the Visual Studio Code. I'll just say code dot. Okay, so I have did it. Okay, now what I will do, there, guys? I have to create a file actually. So I'll create a file. 
I have to create a file by name main.txt. This is a file I have to create, but assume that actually instead of main, mistakenly you are given like a man t.txt. It should be main.txt. Main you are given something like man. It's a mistake actually. You are, did a, you are given a wrong file name itself actually. And you edited everything and finally what you do that, you come over here, you just say git status. Right, okay, main.txt, you just say git add dot and do a git commit hyphen m. What it will do? Added main.txt, but the file name itself is wrong actually. Right, you have committed it. So later what happened, right? You will do one more changes. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me even add one more file. Uh, what is it? App.txt. Okay, so what you will do? You will just do a come over here, then just say git uh, status, git add dot, git uh, commit hyphen m, something. You did some wrong changes. Like added app dot txt. This is the wrong name itself, but okay, anyway, that's fine. Purposely, I'm doing it just to show you how reworth works. How re how re re history works actually. So then when I do a git log, I finish in one line. Now you got to know that okay, Rajesh in the main.txt file, this is okay, this is a commit message, but actually the file name is instead of main, it is man.txt. You need to change to from man to main. And for this one, the last commit ID, you have did some changes into the commit ID itself. In that wrongly, you have typed the commit message. This any of we know because this is at the last, right? So what you do always whenever you want to do any changes to the last commit ID, you have to use hyphen hyphen amend. You have to use fine. But what about here? This one, because I'm to do a rechange of the file itself. The name of the file itself I have to rename from man.txt to main.txt. I have to do changes, right? So for that, what you have to do that, guys, actually you have to uh, rename the file actually. To rename a file, actually, again you have to do a rebase. In this case, what happened? The head is pointing here. You have to take the pointer to the here, but as we know the funda, always whenever you want to do changes to any one of the position, you have to do plus one, right? So here in this case, you have to move your point, head pointer to here. And from here, when you start doing, you can do changes to here, right? That's what we saw, right, from the last examples. Now, what I will do, right, guys, I have to take the, I have to use a, what is it? I have to, what I have to do? You have to do a head, where is it, guys? Sorry, head git rebase hyphen i head tilde 2. Do you agree with me? 1 and 2. Because here you should do changes. No? So you have, have to take the head here actually. Right? Now what you will do that? You will say enter. So what is the head actually? For this one, 2A8083, a, a, right? This is the ID actually, right? So just remember the 2A. Open it. So now you could see that actually, you could, you could see that actually this is what the file is, 2A88803. It means that this is what you need to do the changes. To do the changes, there is something option on the edit option is there, E option is see, use commit, but stop for amending. It means that it will literally stop for the amending. It means that whenever you want to do any kind of editing of a file or the file name itself, you want to do changes, you have to use a E option. Right? You have to use a option. Shall we do it? Yes. Go here. And this is what you have to do. So again, one more thing. As I said, right, whenever you're doing changes, the subsequent, the next I mean, ID will also will get changed. Commit ID, right? Okay, we know that funda. So let me do insert. I'll just say I can even use EDIT. Edit, I can type it. You can either you give E or E can give you the full name edit or let me give us full uh, short name. That is E. Just I'll give E. And I will save that file. See, I will save that file. Now you could see that actually it saves that file, right? Now you could see that actually he is saying that either you do a commit, I mean, or else you do a rebase. He's saying that rebase FNFN continue. So what I will do that, I will just try to do a git status. Now you could see that actually he's saying that either you do a rebase continue, right? It, what it says, git status, your interactive rebase is in progress onto this ID, onto this ID. Right, and he is giving this information. Right now, what I will do that I will uh, try to go. I think uh, if you do an ls, you have this main dot text, man dot text. Uh, can I move mv command is around? Yeah, yeah, mv command is there. Let me move the 
let me rename the file man.txt to main.txt. I have applied the move command here directly. And do ls. Can you do that? Can you see here? Now you have did a from man.txt to main.txt. You have renamed it with the help of a move command. Because right now what happened, right? You are rebase. It is an interactive rebase. It's in progress. Now what happened? You have to manually go and do a rename of the file. Right? Again, do a git status. Now you could see that it has deleted the man.txt. It has added a main.txt. Now you do a git add dot. Enter. Now again, do a git status. Yes. Now you could see it has been added. Now he's saying that, actually, that he's saying that, what is saying that? He's saying that you can even do a rebase hyphen fn continue. Yes. I'll do a git rebase hyphen fn. Enter. Now you say that what exactly do you want to do the changes of this? Uh, I don't want to do any changes. I'll just save it because I need the same message. Now it, you, you could see the, you could see that guys, it has been changed. If you do a git log hyphen fn one line, now you could see that actually you have edited from you have edited this file. You could see that this message, this idea has been changed. Even this idea also has been changed. If you go up a little bit slightly, you could see that actually what was the earlier ID 282 and 86540E. Now, can you see here? This has been changed now. Yes, this has been changed. So, what you're doing that you're using an edit option. In that, what happened? You're just making your uh, uh, git into halt state because that you are making a git to halt state where user can go and you can do the changes. So, I renamed the file from uh, by using simple main uh, move command move m. Uh, man.txt to main.txt. Then again, I did a git add dot, and then again, I did a git status. Then I applied a git rebase hyphen fn continue. Here you have to do a, uh, you have to, you shouldn't do a commit actually. Instead, you have to do a git rebase hyphen fn continue. It will do the changes appropriately. Plus, it will also do the change of the commit ID. Plus, also, it will also do the change of this commit. Do you agree with me, guys? Now you say that, okay, Raj, everything is fine. Now this one, what is happening that I have to do this message change. Oh, it is simple now. I know about the, how to do the changes. Git commit hyphen fn amend hyphen m. What is it actually? You have to give a uh, added app dot teach. This is actual correct commit message. Right? And so enter. Now you could see that you have changed this commit ID. Once you change the commit ID, again, what happened? This ID will also get changed. When you do a git log hyphen fn one line, can you see here now? It has been changed from this one to this. And also could see that this commit message has been changed now. See, from this to this, it has been changed. Now. Is it fine, guys? Uh, sir, if I want to revert to the change, so how to? Revert change means you will come across now, known as a git ref log, actually. With that, you can revert the change also. Uh -huh. hmm. That's the next topic. Did you understood the usage of this? Yeah, yes, sir. It's pretty simple, right? You have to either use a rebase. Most of the time, you will see that we are using rebase only. Re get rebase, uh, head uh, tilde, and give that uh, take to that path where you want to do the changes and all, then again come back, right? Those things and all, you have to do a little bit practice. Okay, now you say that, Rajesh, this is all fine. This is all good. You say that, Rajesh, these two commits are there, right? This added.txt, min.txt, these two commits, I want to squash it. I want to make it as one commit. It means that I want to add this two commit and make it as a single commit. What is it? I want to add this two commit and make it as a one commit. Now you know that, Rajesh. Now you know the trick that I want to squash. It means that I want to uh, squash this two into one. It means that two IDs, two commit ID, I want to mix it. I want to add it and I have to make it take a single commit. So then in that case, what happened that you have to do a git rebase. Where you need to do, where you need to, where you need to take one, and two. It means that you have to take your head to here actually. Right? How you do that? Git rebase head or hyphen i head uh, hyphen i means interactive tilde two. So my new requirement is now that you need to mix, you need to add this to commit, squash it we say, and make it as a one commit. Right? That's all. Right? And say enter. Why so it is not taking enter? Now. Yeah. Now you could say, okay, now this is what it is, right? So it is showing you these two commits, right? Add min.txt and app.txt, uh, right? 
Now you say that Rajesh, what is the latest commit ID? The latest commit ID is app.txt, right? This is the latest commit ID, right? As per our requirement, right? So if you, I'll just exit out. So you know that Rajesh, right? Git log, hyphen fn one line, which is the latest commit ID, guys. Head is pointed here. This is the latest commit ID, right? So you say that Rajesh, whatever is there, no? you squash it means that you add this commit ID to your previous commit ID. If you add it, it means that if you mix it, or if you squash it, then what happened? This two will be two will be made as a one commit ID. So that's the reason what you do, git rebase hyphen i head tilde two. And enter. So here what happened, right? You could see that actually you have some squash head, right? What is there? But meld into previous commit ID. So I'm melding this to the previous commit ID, right? So what I will do, I'll go insert mode, I will remove this. And I'll just say S means squash, or either you can use S Q S H full. I can type it squash. It means that add this commit to this actually meld. It means mix it actually meld. Right now, what I will do that I will save this. So it will open one more uh, thing. Now you say that Rajesh, let me do thing. Let me add my own thing. Okay, let me add here at that add added uh, main dot txt main dot txt. Uh, to app.txt, something like that. This is your message you're giving. Now you'll just save it. Now if you do a git log, hyphen fn one line. Now can you see here, guys? Added min.txt, app.txt. See, this two commit ID has squashed and you have made it to a single commit ID. Right? Now previous one is already there. Added 4.3.2. This is all there. This one, this two, last two, you have squashed everything and you made as a one. Am I clear on this? Is it easy, right? Yes. It's not that difficult. Very good. Okay, now you say that Rajesh, I want to remove some commit ID. You say that Rajesh, I want to remove this commit ID. This second commit ID, I want to remove it. Add a two dot x is the right. This commit ID, I want to do the change. So what your head is here, head minus one, or head plus one will take here, plus two will take here, plus three will take here, but you want to do changes here, so you should take it plus four here. Or else let me remove that add three dot txt. So to remove this add three dot txt commit ID, you have to take it here. So add head head one two three. You have to take it to three positions. You have to take it to three positions, right? So what you will do that you will just do git rebase. So which one you have to remove? You have to remove this three dot txt file. That's what I'm doing, right? Head remove. Uh, sorry, uh, git rebase hyphen i head tilde. Three you have to do because you have to take the pointer here, then you start deleting the third. Added three dot text, right? This third commit three dot text you have to open it. So which one you have to remove? You have to remove this file. Add three dot text, this is all. So to remove it, what you have to do that you have to use something like a drop, demise drop. Remove that particular commit ID. So you can go here, you can remove this. And you can just say drop, or you can just say D also. Anything. Okay. You, either you can use a D or you can drop anything and the commit ID. Right? And save the file. Sorry. I have to escape and then escape it and save the file. Right? Now if you do a git log, I can open one line. Can you see here, guys? You have removed this added three dot text, right? Can you see here this ID? D21934 DC, you have removed it actually. Here also, what happened when you're removing it, when you're dropping it, what are you doing when you're squashing it? There also you will see the merge conflicts. It's not like it will be easy. Here, what happened? All these files, whatever I created so far, right? All these were empty files. Right? I don't know any added to any, I didn't add any text inside the file. But there could be chances where what happened that you will also see the merge conflicts when you're doing any operation with a rebase. Now you know how to uh, call, how to resolve merge conflict, you know that. You will do all merge conflict, then you save it and you do, do it, a profit will work, right? It doesn't mean that when I do, I'm trying to do re rebase, Rajesh, there is no merge conflict. Yeah, no. You will find a lot of merge conflicts. You need to even 
even rectify those much conflict. Since all these are whatever I'm doing, everything is a plain text file. There is no text inside. There is no text inside a file. That's what I'm not seeing any kind of much conflict issues in this case. So to make it you very easy, I just I didn't added any kind of a text inside this file. Others, others would have shown a lot of much conflicts. If you wanted later, I can even show you some examples on how to even resolve merge conflict while running a rebase. Anyhow, you know that in the previous sessions, previous, previous sessions and all, we have been keep seeing rolling rebase, right? If you want to practice everything, you practice along the text. It means that you need to add on, you need to write some text inside the file, do all the changes and see that whenever you're trying to do rebase, everything, right? The merge conflicts will happen and then you know how to resolve. That and all you need to play around now. Right. So now we have seen very important things. Right? One is that actually we did, we saw how to do a commit messages, uh, uh, the, the existing one or to the previous one. We saw that. Second, what we saw that uh, uh, how you can do a, a previous uh, commit message, you can do the changes by using reword. You can even do a squash. We can even do a remove by calling it a drop actually. So whenever you want to remove any commit ID, you can use a rebase to, and you have to insert your inside the file, you have to use the word drop or you need to drop that, right? So you can play around with this with the help of this rebase command itself. Correct? Okay, good guys. Now, one small topic, which we call as a uh, ref lock. This is also a very important uh, thing, which we always see in our, uh, mm. Uh, like uh, whenever we are working on a kit, right? We'll always see this is also highly been used actually, which we call it as a, uh, what do you call? Sorry. Git ref log. Right. Now guys, now whenever we are trying to run a git log and enter, Git log will give you the existing log, whatever the log which a user want to say, right? About the Git workflow, right? He can see with the help of a Git log or else he can run some options also along with that. Git log, hyphen, hyphen, one line, right? He will get all the, uh, you know, all the existing logs or else he can even do a Git hyphen, hyphen graph also. Anything he can execute this command in his command line. But what happened, right? Git internally will maintain a lot of other logs. Apart from these logs, Git will maintain many of the other logs because here what happened, you're doing a lot of rebases and all, right? Those messages are not coming up over here. You might be, see, you might be removing a commit. You might be adding a commit message or changing a commit message. You might be squashing it. You might be adding two commits. You're not seeing all that messages. How to see all those messages where it, Git internally maintains all those logs. Suppose you want to see all the log messages where Git internally maintains everything, then we have to use a Git ref log. This is the command we have to use. Usually in a day-to-day -day activity, we never use this command because for us, it is not really required. But yes, it is required for doing some other operations in the near future. Somebody asked, right, suppose Rajesh, I want, I have removed a file. I'm not, mistakenly I removed a file. I want to recover back that removed committed, right, committed. Uh, I, have, I have to recover back the removed commit message or removed commit ID. Then you have to use a ref log. Always. Now, what happened? Git ref log will maintain all the logs. Whatever a user does an operation in his local machine, right? All those things he will see in his ref logs. Can you see here? See, we the first is that actually something like we returning to the head. You could see that actually you did a rebase to this. You could see that we did a lot of rebase, rebase, rebase. You could see some peculiar character like head at the rate, you no know, open the bracket to close the bracket like this. Can you see that? So these are the commit messages, or these are the messages what uh, internally, uh, you know, like what, uh, uh, you know, like what Git will maintain that. What Git will maintain it. So what you have to do, the go to the, you know, what you have to do is you have to go to the Google and uh, you have to just say Git ref log. Ref log. So it will top, it will Open the official documentation. Please go through this documentation. This is a very good documentation, what we have. He has explained clearly all those options and all. So we can refer to this document also. As well as you can even go to your Atlassian also. Right? Atlassian also, you can go through the Reflog documentation where you'll get a lot of documentation, right? So for example, if you go here, I think Reflog he has almost, uh, if you come down, you could see that Atlassian is there, atlassian.com Reflog conference, right? You have to open this log. You have to open this 
So here, he has given many of the reflux actually. See here. This is very big, uh, which is very lengthy, guys. We will not be able to cover everything. But as per my suggestion, please go through this and uh, you'll be able to get a lot of information about the reflux. I might show one or two, but there are many options are there where I mean, you have to know as a user, so better to go with the documentation. Right? This is also Atlas in Right? So now what will Git will do that? Git ref log is like a permanent log of local Git repo. Right? Now, using uh, ref log, we can uh, undo certain stuffs or certain changes. Right. For example, suppose somebody told, right, I want to recover back the removed file. So what I did as per our requirement, what I did is I removed some files, right? When I do a git log, FNF in one line, what is it actually? You remove that dot 3.txt file, right? If you do an ls, can you see here? You have removed the 3.txt file. Assume that you have mistakenly have did it. Now you want to recover back that file. Right? You want to recover back. Or else I'll do one thing. Let me know one thing. Let me uh, git uh, log hyphen fn one line. You have this commit ID. You will say that Rajesh, let me know then let me uh, squash this three into one commit ID. Let me squash this three into the commit ID. So what you will do that head one, it will take two, head will take two here, head will take three here actually. So can I do a git rebase? Head to three. Yeah. Uh, I have to use hyphen option. Why I'm always forgetting this. Yes. So right now you say that Rajesh, I want to, what you have to do? You have to squash this. You have to squash this, this into this actually. So uh, what I'll do, I'll just say S squash. S squash. Say the thing. So he is saying that what is it actually? Uh, added all three commits, all three something, previous commits, previous three commits, something. Then say the thing. See, you have squashed it. Now if you do a git log, I finish in one line. You could see that actually, right? All the three, you have squashed it. All the previous three commits, you have squashed it, right? Where is it, man? Oh, God. See, all these three, you have squashed it, actually. This, 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 this. And now, finally, you got this one. Right? You got this only two. Right? Uh, now you see that Rajesh, I want to recover back everything, man, whatever you did. No problem, man. You squashed it, but still you said that if you do a git ref log, see, it will show so many, right? It will show so many, right? You squash, this is a combination of two commit ready, uh, add it all, like you squashed everything, right? Now you see that Rajesh, I want to, uh, I want to recover back. So I'll take one thing, man, I'll just take two, something. I'll take here. I'll take this commit ID. Right? I'll take this commit ID. Right. What I will do that I'll just do a git reset hyphen hyphen r and give that commit ID. Enter. Now you could see that if you do a git log hyphen hyphen online, did you recover everything, guys? See, you squash also recovered, your commit ID also got recovered. Sorry, you are a third dot three dot x whatever you removed, right? That also got recovered. So here I'm using git reset hyphen hyphen r, give this. So for this to do, for this to do, you need to have this git reflog, guys. So git reflog is there. If you have to run the git reflog, go to the appropriate commit wherever we want to take it or wherever you want to recover it. Just to do a git reset hyphen fn hard and give the commit ID, it will reset back to you. So you can recover back even your remote file. Also. If you do an ls, can you see here? You got the third dot txt file also. 
but you need to, you need to make sure that actually that you are doing in a local in your system. Suppose on that Rajesh, I'm working on a project actually, right? Because my project uh, we are we are centralized uh, centralizing storing storing all the changes uh, done by the different users. Assume that in your teammates, uh, there are two people out there, you and your friend who are doing all the changes. He might be doing locally in his mission and finally he's pushing the changes into the GitHub. You also be doing a lot of changes and you'll also be doing the changes and you'll also be uploading into your GitHub. Now you might have did a, uh, you might have removed a file locally in your mission, right? You cannot go to your friend system and do a Git reflog and remove and recover it. That is not possible because this everything, whatever you're doing it is in a local system, in your local laptop. Right. So you, if you have removed a file, Mr. Lee, you only have to recover that file. It means that you only have to run a git reset hyphen hyphen hard command and give that, uh, you know, commit ID. You can recover it back. You cannot go to your friend system and do that because there he don't have these reflogs. So reflog is pertaining to your machine. When you are doing any changes to your machine, the reflog will reflect everything in your machine. So like this, what a reflog is there, right? This is for your machine. The same reflog will be not there in your friend's machine. Right. So it means that whenever you are learning low, so this is not but reflog is not but local to a system, we say. Local to a system. Correct, guys? So now we have seen that we have used this git uh, reset command. We have used it with the hyphen F and hard options. So tomorrow in the upcoming sessions, I will show you what exactly reset when you we have seen it. Okay. But we'll go in one level in deep detail. We'll go about what are the three. Uh, like uh, options are there. You remember git reset hyphen fn hard, git reset hyphen fn soft, git reset hyphen fn uh, mixed we have. There are three options are there which will go through it. It's a very interesting. That is one thing. And uh, second is that we have a git tag is there, git stash is there. These are some other topics are there which we have to cover in our upcoming sessions. Right? So for now today, I'm going to stop it here. Right? In our today's session, evening session, in today's evening session, what I'm going to do that we will be going one step forward. All these days, guys, all these 10 sessions, all these Git 10 sessions, we are playing around with this Git. We are playing with Git concept, with Git concept and commands in our local repo itself. It means that we are creating everything in our local repo. Everything in a local laptop, we are doing it. Say, for example, suppose tomorrow you want to maintain a centralized server where you need to push all your code changes. Then we need something known as a remote repo we need. For that, we need to create a remote server. So either what happened on on-premises, I can dedicate one server as Git server where all the changes, whatever you do, right, for the Git right repo, right, you will be pushing everything into the centralized server. So there you will see that you will come across with something commands like a git clone, pull, push like this, right? Fetch command, right? All this pull, push, fetch, uh, there are many commands other which will be going through it. In today's session, what we'll be doing is we'll be playing around with the remote server. Now you know that actually, as I said, right? As is, there are five stages of the guitar there. What are the five stages, guys? Can anyone tell me? What are the five stages? In your local itself, you have something known as a working tree. We know that working tree is there. Right? Stage area. Yes. Staging area. Staging area. Third one is right. uh, local repository. Staging area, staging area, local repo. Uh, remote repo. Remote repo. And the fifth stage is? Centralized repo. Centralized or report is same. Both are one of the same. Report, remote repo means you can either have your own local machine as a Git server or else you can go with your GitHub. You can go with the GitHub or GitLab or your uh, like uh, Bitbucket. There are plenty of uh, tools are there. Right? Plenty of the uh, remote repos are there. Bitbucket, which is nothing but your Atlassian companies, right? Atlassian. Git repo. These are many are there. Like for example, even you have your Azure uh, is also there, right? Azure repo is there. Or else you are, um, what do you call it? AWS, code committee is there, code uh, repo is there. These are all, these are all nothing but the remote repo only. These all come under GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, all this comes under the remote repo. The fifth stage is nothing but the stash. Somebody is asking, sir, what is the fifth stage? I told that I'll be telling you later, later. Now today I came across with something as a stash. So these are the five areas we say. Local working tree, staging area, local repo, remote repo, and finally stash. 
so in today's class evening class we will be we will be continuing we will be understanding everything about the remote location right how to create it how to first we will do locally how to create in our on prem on premises later what happen in one or two session what happen i will jump into the github or i will jump into the bitbucket and i will show you like how to create a remote repo with help of uh, with your github or with with help of uh, the gitbucket what you have to do that you have to go and you have to create an account there over there you have to log into the account create a repos either it could be public repo or a private repos right there are many other advanced things are there which you have to learn in this uh, remote repos right so what are those advanced things advanced is something like you have a web books actually web books are some of the advanced things web books user management user management repo management all those are advanced topic in your remote repo right this is what the advanced things you'll be seeing so one class one or two class i'll be showing dedicatedly on github or into the bit bucket i will show you so that you will get to know about used to about the gui as well as what are the options first we will see how to create an account it's very simple you need to have some gmail id to google account to create an account and then like we will log into the github account you can even uh, use a multi factor authentication and then we will see all the options whatever it has it has a lot of settings is there uh, you know a lot of other stuffs are the web books are there many things are there which you have to go through it into the gui and then understand then create your own repo either it could be public or private and what are the limitations are there what are the like what are the licensing cost how many free how many number of pools and uh, pool and pool she'll the free it will give you after that how much it is chargeable all such things will be discussed in our upcoming session so that's what i said right five to six sessions i need to complete this guys so today we are complete day six day 10 session in another four or five sessions or six sessions you'll be completing everything so that you'll get a complete picture now you understood right there are a lot of things are there in the git to learn now and as and when you start working on the git you will come across many many new options many new commands will come across don't think that okay rajesh has not covered like maybe some of the things i have covered some of the covers things i have not covered but thing is that we cannot cover everything over a, over a period of time you have to put your own interest to learn more and more actually right because if you start speaking everything you say that rajesh all options you show me uh, no our git itself will take around uh, one month time it will take to complete right so we have to give in some position you have to give a break you have to make you understand and one more very important thing guys a uh, very important concept what is there in our git is a uh, git branching strategies this is one of the very important topic many interviewer are they ask you print git branching strategy what are the strategies you follow actually in the git branching this is we have to learn right at that point only you will be learning even the web books also all these things git branching strategy everything you can effectively learn when you are working on any chd pipeline so in our case we will be learning a uh, jenkins we have to we will be learning jenkins we will be learning a uh, git tab and we also will be learning about the github actions these are three important chd pipeline which will be doing will be seeing it in our upcoming sessions right so this is what my plan is that actually so what i will do when i try to take a github by this week right when i started after some time within the git uh, jenkins itself what will happen that i will be showing you telling you what is git <laughs> branching branching strategy is all about git web books and all i'll be showing all these things as a part of the git sessions itself actually i'll not be showing now itself actually because if i explain now also you'll not be able to appreciate when i'm taking jenkins at the time when i'm explaining about the git branching strategy and web book right you will be able to appreciate you will also know that how exactly this will be used in our jenkins or any cicd pipeline how this uh, thing concepts are used you will be able to appreciate at that time so i will give this two topics leave this topic after some point of time i will not be covering as part of the git now itself because when i start jenkins after jenkins is getting completed near that time i will be calling i'll be explaining this concept is it clear so guys get 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 itself will take i think i told you already get uh, sorry not get jenkins itself will take around 3 weeks to complete this three this topics very interesting so we'll be almost like we'll be covering around 20 to 22 sessions or more than that only on jenkins only and when we are starting jenkins every weekend every weekend every weekend we will be learning projects one project at least so we'll be learning one project it could be a mini project 
it could be a small mini project or or some major tool. I don't know. We will see how it goes. So it means that Rajesh, initially you will be teaching some mini project, right? Yes, I'll be showing you some mini project, small, small project where you will enjoy integrating everything, where you'll start enjoying working on a Git project. Sorry, in Jenkins project. And later on, as when we cover many other tools like Terraform I covered, right? And, uh, you know, like uh, Packer I covered, Docker I covered, uh, no, uh, you know, like uh, uh, HashiCorp's Vault uh, tool I covered. Many tools when you cover it, slowly one by one, we'll be adding into our uh, pipeline. So your project becomes more and more complex every day. So every weekend, I will promise that guys, I'm going to cover a small project. With that, you'll get a lot of hands-on. Every week you'll be learning, every week you'll be learning hands-on. So it will be a good start for you all that, okay, I'm starting doing projects now. So that's what I need from you all that. We should start doing working on projects now. So I'll be, uh, and to be very honest with you, all of you, I'll be referring to a lot of people's, other people's projects. A lot of freebies are there who have uploaded a lot of projects in uh, YouTube. I'll be referring to them. Some projects I will have did it. I'll be referring to some other uh, uh, trainer author has uh, covered some, uh, you know, some uh, projects. I'll be looking to that. Some projects which have been covered in Udemy. Mix of all these things, I will be referring it and I'll be doing my own projects now. So I'm very frank with that. I'm not saying that I'll be here. I'm doing everything from scratch. No, I will not. We can do it. But what happened? We're already having a reference of so many projects in YouTube. Right. So I'm always honor. I will always you know, respect all those people in YouTube and in Udemy and many other where people have uploaded a lot of projects. I respect them and I use their work and I will try to do a lot of changes into my new project. And I will try to bring a new flavor out of that. Actually, I'm going to mix my uh, my own salt, actually. So I will, I'm always grateful for all those people to whomever I refer. And then I'll add my own flavor and I'll be doing a lot of things. So in that, if you see it, you will get some different feeling. When you see that project, you know, whatever I do, right? You'll get some different feeling. Or oh, something Raj is teaching, some extraordinary thing, some extra thing he's teaching, you'll get to know. But actually, to be very honest, I'll be referring to many other authors' project also. You can see, guys, to be very honest with you, all the trainers you know, who are our training in Udemy and all, they would have referred to some other trainers' videos, actually, or some other person's uh, project work. Those person, again, they are referred to some other project, actually, some other person. So it is something like a chain link. It's not like that you will be doing from your scratch. Many people are there who refer to other people's work and they will try to add their own flowers and they'll bring out of it something new. Right? But anyway, see, the project is project. It means that you need to know how to make use of this tool and how to integrate it and how to make, uh, you know, like these tools effectively in your project. This You have to know it. Right? For that, anyhow, we have the pipeline, we have a Git, we have a Jenkins, we have a uh, Bitbucket, we have a Docker, we have Kubernetes. This is already there. We have to use this tool effectively to develop our own, our, for our own requirement, you have to develop the pipeline or you have to make use of these tools. Right? Correct, guys. Do you agree with this? So, with this, guys, we are going to stop it here now. What we'll do, we are going to uh, meet again at night tonight at nine o'clock. So, we'll be starting, we'll be continuing with our Git uh, day 11 session. As I said, right, we will be starting with the remote repo now, right? Another three, two to three sessions, I need to cover on the Git remote part. And then I will move to the GitHub or uh, Bitbucket, then like flow, slow around, show around many things. And finally, I will show you how you can, uh, like, uh, uh, what I can say, like how to attend uh, uh, or how to go with the Git uh, inter question answers, right? Very important, those things I will cover. So maybe another five, six sessions will be able to cover it. Fine, guys, with that, I'm going to stop it. Any doubts you have so far? Sarvanan is there? All uh, other? And, uh, no, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Sir, do you, are you really enjoying this Git or is it something boring? Or how is it? How do you feel so far? No, sir, it's interesting only. So we have to practice. So yeah, no, no, you could see that we are in a day 10 session. So many things have been covered, right? So it means that Rajesh, it's a big thing. I have to cover. You have to practice many things. Many people, I want to tell you one thing, sir and other. Many people in our batch, you know, they are already in sync. It means that they are already covering every every tool, every video they have covered till now. Yeah. Even get to day nine date. Uh, even today's also shall be uploading. They will do it today itself. Actually. So all are on track actually. If some of some of you are not on track, track then it will be difficult for you guys. Please keep on track. Everything, please complete then and there itself. So by next three months, when you're applying for a job, right, you should be ready to apply a job. 
that yes. should be your motto right i should be ready now another 3 4 months next month after a post january 15th right guys the job the job requirement is going to open and at that time you should be ready you should not say that no now i will after january 15th now i'll start learning no then it's one case then again 4 months you need to complete it don't do that complete now and now itself everything practice everything by Janu post january 15th be ready with whatever tool we have covered to apply for a job damn 100% sure you are going to get a job by that time we would have already covered even kubernetes also docker also kubernetes i think we will be in, in on the flow when we are going i think in january we will be in a kubernetes that is fine okay it's okay but with the existing tools whatever you covered so far no terraform these that everything uh, we are ready with the four five tools we are ready with the tools and we know something on cloud by the time by god's grace if i have a time i will start even the git uh, sorry aws cloud also i'll start slowly we'll be doing one by one you will enjoy learning the cloud also then you integrate all these things we will do projects on even on cloud also and then like we can apply a job now you will definitely get a job no worries we have to just shine ourselves for some time we have to shine it guys that's all okay guys thank you then okay let me stop the recording one second uh, i mean rajesh uh, hi rajesh it's me